What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We're in uh, final stages of painting. I know I said that previously, the car is not complete. Uh, the reason being is this is the driver's side door that I painted uh, way back when, probably, I don't know, eight months ago or so. As you guys may notice, I burnt through the paint. Thing, I was like, well, the molding goes right here. It might cover that area. You know, it might not be such a big deal. Then this happened. I actually dropped the door and uh, the paint actually, well, got removed in this area, if you will. Um, we also had a couple of defects, some scratches that I wasn't able to, um, to fix. So I'm going to end up repainting that. Um, had a couple of small chips as well. I think there's one right there. Not sure if you could see it, um, but uh, yeah. And then I got a couple things here on the bottom of the door. When I laid it down on this uh, little contraption, uh, kind of, I think that the um, the door, what the paint wasn't dry enough on the door, and it ended up uh, messing up the bottom section. So we're gonna have to uh, fix that. So I ended up sanding it, and I do have a couple bare metal spots here and there. Um, so we got to fix that. And then we also have the fender. This is also the driver side fender. Uh, there was a couple issues with this one. When I originally painted it, I got a lot of dust and fish eyes on the very top right here. But when I was buffing, I ended up burning through the uh, base and the clear. Um, so yeah, so I ended up having to, well, respray this one and wet sand that out first. And then gonna go ahead and put a high build and then um, and uh, continue on with uh, possibly refinishing, or actually, and then we're gonna continue on with refinishing the fender and the door. So that's what we have today.
Well, I'm in the dark. <laughs> My power went out as I was painting. So yeah, I guess that's the end of this video. <laughs> Shit. Well, after finding the circuit breaker to my unit, this one was popped. I know you guys can't see, the bottom one was popped, so I went ahead and reset it. Let's see if that helps. Got the, uh, got the power back on. Ah, today is not a good day for painting again. Not only did the power go out, the primer started drying in the cup. So with that, we got some Rhino liner looking primer. Check that out. God, that looks ugly. So ugly. Look at this. Ah, gosh. Yeah, well, at least we have enough primer on there to sand it down. It's just primer, so I'm not too worried about it but the primer gun is uh it needs a good cleaning look at this yeah she's she's done she's looking a little crusty so i'm gonna have to break down this gun and, and clean it out i thought it was the i thought i could thin out the primer a little bit get it to spray right it ain't happening so this primer on the fender needs about 90 minutes to cure and it's about right at that time frame so we're actually going to start sanding the fender now i know i promised i was going to do the door in this video as well but unfortunately i just don't have enough time uh it's about one o'clock in the morning right now so i just don't have the time to uh to do the door as well so um so in this video i guess it's just going to be the prepping the fender so right now i'm gonna end up grabbing some 600 and sanding down
All right, so uh, we let our fender sit in the bake <laughs> for an hour. You guys in uh, in spray booths have it made, man. We, Us guys in the garage, we don't have that luxury of baking something. I do have a heater up there and it will get the garage up to like 80 degrees, but it's nothing like an actual bake. But uh, let's go ahead and look at the part. And um, obviously it's not perfect, but uh, this is a garage painted part. So let me just uh, show you guys real quick what I'm talking about. So fresh off the bake, you could actually see, um, we do have some dust in there and that usually lands um, as it sits, little stuff falls from the ceiling and stuff that's been floating around will eventually land on your paint job so this is a lot of it is surface dust so a lot of that will actually polish out very very easily we do have a couple little fish eyes very very small ones and not a lot of them just a couple here and there um, but you can see the overall finish is pretty good let me try to get the camera to focus there Okay, I'll just zoom in, I guess. You can see overall our um, our texture is very, very nice, very nice and tight. Um, it's not glass per se, but then again, this clear, uh, sorry, my alarm went off. Um, <clears throat> but um, this, this clear likes to shrink a bit. I'm trying to get the best focus possible. Um, so yeah, this, this clear likes to shrink a bit, so it, it's never glass per se, and you could actually see a lot of dust right there. And like I said, this is mostly all surface dust. This is dust that has fallen off as the paint is drying. And, um, this is all just surface stuff. This will be easy to, uh, cut and buff very, very easily. Um, all that stuff can be removed very easily. So I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Um, of course there was some parts that, um, you know, we did have some dust from our base and we do, we did have to bury some of that. And, uh, in some cases is better to bury some of the dust and I'll, and I'll explain why, because in a garage, you're gonna get dust. You could be fighting this thing all day trying to sand out your dust and, you know, uh, try to remove the dust. And then you go and spray another coat and then later on there's more dust on it again. Or you go and sand it all out, get it all nice and then spray it and there's another, you know, piece of dust or whatever. Or you created your own dust by sanding the base and then maybe you missed the spot and you didn't wipe it off. And then all of a sudden now you have more dust than what you started with. So in some cases when painting in a garage, I'm just going to say it's better to bury it. Better to bury it, okay? Um, but for the most part, we got a really, really good finish. Um, this will cut and buff very, very uh, easily. And also we'll get the results that uh, we're looking for. Of course, we had a dent somewhere in this area, I want to say. Uh, dent looks good. There's there's no dent anymore. Um, so that's good. And then um, Yeah, the I gotta say though the DV1 S Very 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 good for uh, base It's probably one of my best base guns and I think I'm gonna utilize this gun a little bit more than than I have been over The Techno Pro Light the Techno Pro Light kind of shit on me um, kind of spit out paint and um, that's probably my fault. Probably didn't clean it last time I used it, and um, it's ended up spitting out some some paint that probably was stuck in the tip or something. But the DV1S very very good for base. Uh, of course, my clear gun when I went for clear the SATA 5000. This is still one of my favorite guns for clear. Uh, I just can't find anything that lays down the clear better than that, and fast too. I have a small air compressor, so I don't have a lot of time to wait around. And I will say that when I use my DV1 clear co gun, it's so slow that basically I run out of air by the time I, I finish spraying. And it's just because that gun is really, really slow. It's good for clear, I will, I will say that. It, it does get a pretty good finish, 
but it's just too slow and I need something fast. I need something fast that can put down the material and still be able to save air. And I feel that that gun isn't as efficient as people think. People are like, oh yeah, this is a very good efficient gun. It, I don't think it is. I think it actually uses more air because of how slow it is. Um, and uh, I did notice that last time I painted the car with the DV1, I basically was fighting my air compressor. My air compressor was kicking on the whole time and I was really fighting, um, uh, basically running out of air is basically what was happening. Um, but yeah, overall, I think the Fender came out great and uh, I'm very, very happy with it. Let's get, let's get really close in there. I mean, almost glass, you could still see some dirt nibs here and there. And that's, that's normal. That's normal. But, um, yeah, overall, really, really nice. Uh, I, I never say my jobs are glass. This is very close to it. Um, probably as best that I can do in a garage. You can see some dust nibs here and there. You can see a little bit right here in this area. Um... My jobs are never perfect, all right? The reason being is my environment is not perfect either. So um, I don't expect my paint job to be perfect if where I'm spraying is not perfect. So uh, anyway, guys, I, that's going to be all I have for you guys. really hope you guys enjoy. And uh, well, we'll catch you guys on the next one when we spray the driver's side door. And by the way, guys, don't forget to like, comment, or sh even share the video if you think it's going to help somebody out. Um, I noticed that, um, you know, I haven't really been posting a lot and, uh, it seems like my views are starting to go down and by giving the video a like, if you liked it, uh, kind of helps my video get out there to other viewers as well. All right, guys. So stay spraying, stay wrenching. Catch you guys on the next one. See ya.